Welcome to Maze Berlin, where I have Pagan with me. First of all, guys, uh, what's going on? Uh, your debut album seems to be the shit, and uh, you are getting <laughs> rave you. reviews of your live performances. So, what's happening? I don't reckon we've ever had the review a review that our album is the shit. So that's a first. So that's awesome. Um, it's been going really well. I mean. It's pretty surreal that we did a debut album and it's brought us all the way here. It's amazing. It's kind of surpassed all of our expectations, I think. Yeah, totally. Um, I think, um, yeah, again, just to reiterate what Nikki said, I don't think any of us ever anticipated that uh, these 11 or 12 songs would get us to to Germany, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, but yeah what, what else is going on, Nikki? Oh, I mean... We're on tour. We've been spending lots of hours in the van, eating heaps of bread and cheese and drinking heaps of beer. <laughs> it's just been great. So what's the origin story of Pagan? Um, well, it's a very long story, so I'll try to tell it as as, as quickly as I can. So uh, I met our drummer and guitar player, Matt and Xavier, um, about maybe eight or nine years ago now. Um, and they played in a band that my old band would play with a lot, um, and I really loved their band. Um, and we kind of became friends, and we we bonded over things, kind of things outside of music. So uh, we were, we were all into sort of like skateboarding and the same type of films and art and all of this sort of stuff that that kind of came secondary to playing in punk bands together. Um, and so I, I, I just really took a liking to them and we, we started hanging out a lot and eventually I, I just, I, I think the bands that we were playing in at the time just became a little bit stale and, and, and started to evaporate and I knew that I wanted to start something new but I also, we're all sort of in a, in a position where I think doing a new band wasn't maybe the first priority in any of our lives um, but nonetheless we, we did it and uh, we just wanted to do something, we, you know, we used to play like really fast, technical kind of music This with this band. We wanted to do something that was a little bit more um, just kind of flowing and, and, and just like rock and roll music rather than being super technical and, and you know, just try to write almost like pop songs. Um, so we, yeah, we wrote like three songs and then we started thinking about who would sing for the band. And in the, in the interim, Nikki and I had been doing a punk band together as well. And so I, I knew that Nikki was like, you know, my favorite front person, the only person I could imagine to, yeah, I'm nice to you sometimes. Um, the only person I could imagine to front the band. So I, uh, I got everyone together in an espresso bar and we had a little a night out and uh, that was the start of the band. And then from there, we just kept writing songs. So it's kind of it. It's, yeah. Okay, yeah, I read some uh, very inspired descriptions of your music online, but uh, let's start with your own like uh, inspirations and influences. Oh, okay. For your music. Yeah, um, like a, it's it's a hard one because I think it's changed a lot since the band started. Um, because now I think we don't so much think about the uh, maybe like the music that we're listening to so much as like we kind of know what pagan sounds like, so we try to write pagan songs. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, when the band first started, uh, like I, I, I wanted to kind of play music that kind of sounded like Black Flag or Motorhead or, um, you know, like Turbo Negro, uh, but it kind of evolved into something else. And I think we just started drawing from a lot of different, you know, styles of music too, like pop music and, you know, disco and, and, and you know, obviously black metal was a big thing. I, I think as well, because we didn't want to be like any particular band we just did what we liked and therefore we just found a sound that was really truthful to us because it was just really honest it was just an amalgamation of all the things we liked we didn't really care about what it sounded like in the end just because as long as we liked it we knew it would be good so yeah it just turned into that pagan sound in the end okay what kind of uh, feelings and thoughts would you like your music to raise in people? Um, I ultimately would like it to inspire people who are a bit more part of a minority who maybe don't think that they can get up there and do like front a band or get up there and play guitar or drums or bass or whatever it may be. I would love to be somebody who would inspire a generation of people who would 
be able to do that, that they could listen to the music and then think, oh, that that person can do that, so can I. That's my kind of ultimate goal with it. Um, I think as well just like music that people can have fun to. I don't think that heavy music always has to be totally serious. It's really nice when we play a show and people can just like dance to the songs and not necessarily have to only headbang or mosh. I mean, they can totally do that too. That's great. But dancing's equally as fun. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I think that I just want the pagan shows to be very inclusive. Um, and I, you know, I've been, I've been in, in situations where I've gone to see bands play and I've felt like a bit of an outsider. Um, and I would like to hope that our band is a space for people who have felt that way to, you know, to, to come and, and hang out for a few hours and, and not feel that way. And you kind of shut yourself out from all your problems in the outside world and you're, you know, for that, you know, 45 minutes or hour or whatever, however long we're playing for, you just, you do feel like you're a part of something. And that's, I think that comes back to the whole like pagan aesthetic when we talk about the cult and the rituals and all of that sort of thing. Like, yeah, it's kind of tongue in cheek and it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a shtick, but we're pretty serious about it being like a, you know, I want everyone to feel that they're a part of it, not just the band, you know? Okay, uh, as I understand, your UK slash Europe tour ends tonight here in Berlin. So what can we expect tonight? Uh, I think that we're all feeling pretty heavy-hearted about leaving. Um, we've had a really, really wonderful time over the past three weeks. So um, I think tonight is going to be kind of a culmination of, of that that time. Like I, 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 I'm feeling really excited about playing. I'm also feeling a little bit, a little bit like not sad. I don't know if sad's the word, but like. Um, yeah, I just want to. I just want to make sure that we like put a really good stamp on what's been a, a pretty amazing experience. Um, yeah, you can definitely expect a lot of red wine spillage on stage. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's talk a bit more about the lives. Uh, uh, what do you look for in your live performances? What makes a good gig for you? Um, being able to hear ourselves on stage is really important, <laughs> and. Being like having an energy on stage and I think it, this goes, you know, before you step on stage as well, having an energy so that you're all in the same headspace. It's really important as a band because you are an ensemble. So you need everybody to be, you know, a part of the puzzle. If someone's feeling out, it will affect the show because we don't want anybody to come off stage feeling really shitty about the show when we all feel great, you know, like you want to all feel good about it. So just going in re with a, um, you know, strong group vibe and um, just, yeah, playing well, which a lot of it is being able to hear yourself well and knowing like what you need in levels and just doing it safely as well. Like not, you know, I wouldn't like blow my voice out just because it's a big crowd, like just being aware of your surroundings. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that the, uh, us all being in a good place is really important to us. Um, we are, we try to spend a lot of time together before we play as well. We try to always eat, at, you know, pretty early, but we always try to eat together. And it's kind of like, no matter what everyone's kind of doing, that's sort of the time where we're together and we can kind of think about how the show is going to go and the set lists and all that sort of thing. Um, and I, yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. I think you've, I think you've nailed it. I, th I just think that it, we, we really try to make sure that we're all like ready to go. And we're, and, and, and if someone's maybe feeling a little bit flat, we do what we can to like, you know, to, to bring them back up. Uh, yeah, no, you already said that you have a bit of a, you know, tongue in cheek uh, with Pagan. But uh, for example, when I scroll through your social media, you know, read your interviews. Uh, I know I like it, but I also kind of feel weird, you know, liking it. So uh, how serious are you? Me too. I feel exactly <laughs> the same way. And uh, how much do you think about these things? Uh, you know, um, your image, sorry for using that word, but how much do you think about these things and how serious are you with this? I think we think about it a lot. I think it's just as important if, you know, as, as the music itself. And I think that Something that we really wanted to do with Pagan from the beginning was kind of make it a little bit more than just, uh, you know, a rock band playing songs. And we wanted to kind of create this, uh, maybe a world that exists around the music so that if you're someone who is interested in the band, again, you can kind of immerse yourself in it and maybe maybe feel a part of something that, 
you know, again, gets you gets you out of your own head for, you know, the duration of the record or the time that you're at the show. So, yeah, all of it, like the, the imagery and the, the social media, it, it's all part of this sort of bigger thing. So, yeah, I, I, we put a lot of thought into it. We, we just want to make sure that every every kind of creative outlet that revolves around the band is is kind of one big thing in unison and it's all kind of, I don't know, it's just, I, I think it's interesting. Like I, I always really like bands who kind of exceed themselves beyond just, you know, their records and you can really kind of like invest your time and your interest in getting lost in this, you know, bigger thing. So for sure, heaps of time. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's very interesting actually. So where does the inspiration for all that come from? Where do the ideas come from? Well, um, I think one big thing for Nikki and I, Nikki and I are big kind of, uh, we, we both really enjoy reading about uh, like cults and religions and, and all of that sort of thing. So there was kind of a, a play on some of the things that we maybe read about. But um, one thing that I think is really cool, like one of my favorite things about the record and what, what Nikki was writing about is that she kind of got, she kind of found a way, I think, to turn that into something very personal to her and you're obviously a much better place to talk about it. Yeah, if I mean, if we are going into like um, the premise of the album, because um, that is very much part of the pagan theme as well, I guess to an extent. So I, I very much wrote it as a breakup album. I'm, you know, big sucker for a good love song, so I had to write it about love, love broken heart. Um, and I was, I, I had, I had a broken heart, and I had lots of anger and lots of mixed feelings, and I was grieving. So the album is definitely about that, but it incorporates, like Dan was saying, the cult thing. So I've used metaphorically, like talking about how I was in a relationship with somebody really controlling, and how I just felt like really trapped in it. As a metaphor, I've used um, a, an imaginary cult and a cult leader and how a cult leader can prey on their victims and why the victims like want to stay in the cult. For example, like the Jonestown massacre, which I was reading up on at the time, how these people got tricked into being in that church for so long with this guy who was such a fraud. Um, and then it just ended so hor horrifically. So I kind of use that as a metaphor and I think it, it does go hand in hand, even with our like, um, social media content and the way we write about join the cult and things like that so that's lucky that it works in that way but it is also stuff that i'm just so genuinely interested in and that's why the album that was the premise for the album i also in a, another note it goes hand in hand with the theme of the album obviously but yeah another theme i've put in there is about being a woman and how we do uh, well, I do I can't speak on behalf of everybody but I do feel like we have a different emotional landscape to men because of our hormones and the way we our hormones change monthly and how that can be looked at as a negative thing and I was made to feel in this relationship that it was a really negative thing that I was a sensitive person who was emotional but I think it's a really positive thing we should talk about our emotions and we should express how we feel because it's truthful we shouldn't hide the fact if we want to cry in public. I think it's really, really healthy to cry on a tram if you're feeling upset. If I see somebody cry in public, I'm like, I really want to hug them, but good on them for crying because they're upset right now. They're not internalizing it because that's so unhealthy. So, yeah, that's basically the premise of the album. And um, going back to the our sort of image, the cult thing very much goes hand in hand with that. Totally. We also love the devil heaps, and uh, we also like Italian culture because we most of us come from Italian families. Um, so, like a lot of you know Italian culture and folklore is it goes into the overall stick of the band as well. Uh, yeah, and and also like disco and pop music as well. And we try to kind of take aesthetics from from those worlds and turn them super evil too. Yeah, you don't know if I'm joking or not, do you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I still don't know what's going on, but I like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, for, uh, for last, uh, looking forward, you know, uh, the European tour is now over, um, but the hype is certainly up, so what's next? Uh, so we, after this tour, we head back to Australia, obviously. Um, we have a, we're playing a festival called the Unify Festival, 
in the summer, which is sort of like a bigger heavy music festival. Uh, then we are touring Australia again, uh, hopefully around April. Uh, and then we're hoping to get back over here to do more of this because it's been so great. So, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to slow down very much over the next few months. But um, we're also obviously in, in, the, in that time too, we need to start thinking about writing another record because uh, it's, uh, you know, obviously the, the schedule is becoming fuller and fuller. So we need to sort of make some time for that too. So I think probably January we're going to start um, locking ourselves away and, and, and trying to write new songs and, and do all that kind of thing too. Okay, thank you so much and all the best. Absolute pleasure. Thank you.